Good morning and welcome. Thanks for all the faculty, staff, and students that have showed up this morning to be with us live. And thank you online, all the people who are here for our homecoming uh, virtual service today. The bulletins online will be posted for you, and for those who are joining us live, the bulletins are digital, and all you have to do is scan that QR code in the back, or go to the URL on the bottom if you're having trouble reading that QR code. Today is a communion service, and all are invited to join us in communion. Uh, no matter who you are or where you're from, this gift of grace is for you. The way we're going to do communion is that we'll start with the front row, we'll come up one at a time. You'll receive a small bag of bread that's been sealed for you. Then you'll grab a small glass and I'll fill it uh, for you. Return to your seat and wait until everybody's there, done and uh, getting their elements and they're seated and then we'll all remove our masks and we'll eat. After you're done with that, please take your glass and put it inside of the plastic bag and zip it up. That way we can nice and, and sanitary light be able to collect those and clean up later. One of the really neat things about today is that uh, as Neil says, we turn to play piano for us. Um, we won't be singing. Obviously, that's still one of the things. Uh, according to our COVID restrictions that we're not quite doing yet, but we will have the benefit of this music. Also, my guitar is uh, Jacob Orchard. I invite you to join with me in a moment of silence before we begin. I invite you to rise for our confession and forgiveness this morning. Trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Calling to mind the weakness of our human condition, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Good and loving God, we pray that you will listen as we confess our failures in love and friendship. We talk about such things as caring, community, and concern, but instead we show anger, malice, hostility, and greed. We talk about faith, hope, and love, but instead we show injustice, distrust, and apathy. We talk about kindness, forgiveness, and gentleness. But instead, we show hate, spite, and selfishness. Forgive the sins of our fallen condition, the sins of our broken promises, and the sins we dare not name. In the name of Jesus, who was crucified for sin, forgive us. This is how God showed love for us. Jesus came into the world so that we might have life. This is what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that God loves us and sent Jesus to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. As a call to ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord of hosts will prepare a ravaged banquet for all peoples on this mountain, a banquet of aged wine, choice pieces with merit, and refined aged wine. And on this mountain he will swallow up the coverings which is over all peoples, even the veil which is stretched all over all nations. He will swallow up death for all time, and the Lord God will wipe tears away from all faces. And he will remove the reproach of his people from the earth, all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. And it will be said that, that day, Behold, this is our God, for whom we have waited that he might save us. 
And this is the Lord whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Our second reading this morning comes from the 21st chapter of Revelation. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he shall dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them. And he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall no longer be any death, there shall no longer be any mourning, or crying, or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Right, for these words are faithful and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost. I invite you all to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew in the fifth chapter. And when he saw the multitudes, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And opening his mouth, he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men cast insults at you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. There's no way to get around it. We're living in difficult times. And it's uncomfortable, and the fact that many of you are online watching this right now is a testament to how much COVID has disrupted not only our normal lives, but the operation of our college and the way we do everything, from church services to education. Those of you out in, uh, on the internet probably won't be able to see, but there's a huge pile of desks in the corner of my chapel. It's not very seemly, but don't worry, I don't think the cameraman will get it. Just the fact that we are dragging desk chairs into the chapel to be able to use this for instructional space is just a small kind of sign of how disruptive these things have been. And it's not just these little things. It's not just having a, desk, a bunch of desk chairs in the chapel. And it's not because we're spread out six feet from each other and I'm preaching every Sunday wearing a mask. We have experienced real loss. We've lost time. We've lost connection with each other. We've lost the ability to meet face to face over a cup of coffee. Something that we thought six months ago was such a simple human interaction. We've also lost people. Whether from this illness or for some, from something else, Every person in this room has experienced some sort of significant loss this year. We all come burdened with that loss that we have experienced this last year, whether it's that small sense of loss or an even greater loss. And soon we'll read the names of those who have been in our community that have died this year. 
that great loss of those people who have been here at Teal, part of our community, part of our heritage and our legacy. And we've experienced that loss this year too. And piling up all of these losses on top of each other, you can say, boy, we, we, we sure are having a year. All right, 2020, grr. I see all kinds of memes on the internet about 2020, and, and none of them are nice. And yet, in our readings today, we catch a glimpse of a completely different reality where things are just upside down, where we don't have the sense of loss that we have right now in this room, but we have a sense of hope, a sense of optimism, a sense of joy. Isaiah the prophet paints this picture of what happens later in our lives together, where there's this mountain laden with good food, with rich wines, where people from all nations are streaming and coming together in unity to be able to enjoy living in the presence of God. What a wonderful image for us today who are experiencing loss and difficulty. And then we have this image from Revelation, that book that starts to tell us about the end of all things, and revelations can often be very scary and have very scary imagery, very stark and apocalyptic, but there's this at the end of all of that, all of that trouble, all of that loss, all that pain and suffering that we see in that book, there is that, again, glimmer of hope. It's a new heaven and a new earth coming down out of heaven where all people will be able to dwell in peace and that God will dwell with them and they will be his. When Jesus climbed the mountain to teach his disciples, he was inaugurating a new way of seeing things, a new way of being together, a new way of of being community. And he too understood that the people that he was talking to had experienced loss and difficulty and hardship in their lives. They had seen death, they had seen suffering, they had seen hunger. And so the first thing that Jesus said to these people as he gathered them on the mountain, he said, blessed are you when you're poor in spirit. Because yours will be the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you who mourn, because you will be comforted. Blessed are you who are gentle. You will inherit this earth. Blessed are those who hunger for righteousness. Because you will be satisfied. Although these things are difficult to imagine right now, we know that in the very distant future, this is our promise, right? And yet, it's not a promise just for the distant future. It is a promise for us right now, here today. Because we in this room, we on this campus, as this community, have the opportunity to start working these things out for ourselves. If we are poor in spirit, we have each other. If we are mourning, we have each other. If we hunger and thirst for righteousness as we look at the things that are happening in our world around us, we don't despair because we have each other. And if we can build that kind of community here, we not only can have optimism for the future, but we can begin to build it right now. We can begin to build it here together. 
a place truly where the poor in spirit can be comforted, where we can see glimpses of that kingdom of heaven in each other's eyes and in our fellowship and in our community. For those who have graduated from Teal College, for our alumni, for our friends, we have all these kind of anecdotes. We have these stories, our Teal story, where we have glimpsed authentic community for ourselves. We all have a place in our own experiences as we come through this place where we know that we know that we belong here. That we have a place here. That we have a group of people that when we are poor in spirit, when we mourn, when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will help carry us and we will carry them. But again, that's not just an image for this campus and for this community right here. This is a blueprint. A blueprint for us to go out and be that kind of person no matter where we are. While we keep that connection here, that blueprint, that thing that we're trying most to do on this campus, that community, And it sounds crazy. It sounds far too optimistic, far too high in the sky, but I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen here. And this is like the Spirit of God, which has promised to be with us, to comfort us to give us an inheritance, to give us mercy, to be our God, and we, God's people. And although they are just glimpses now, these glimpses will get us through. They will continue to orientate us to that future where all things are made right again. Does anybody out there thirst for that? Where all things are made right again? Not only is that our promise today, but it's also our mission. That forming that community here in this place today, we might be for the world a sign of that coming kingdom where there are no more tears, there is no more death, and no more crying. Amen.
I invite you to stand as we recite together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God has given us each other to know and to love as we walk in our pilgrimage on earth. We now remember those in Teal's community who have died this year, and now rest in the arms of God's great mercy. You may be seated while we read the names. Donald C. Anderson. Alicia Anthony. Lionel A. Arnold. Martha Baird. Irma L. Claire Baird. Stella Barrett. Henry Barton, Edsel L. Bagley, Merlin A. Vile, R. Edward Fish, Edna Brinkley, Joan L. Brown, Beverly Brown, Woods Brown, Harold E. Buff, Layla E. Calderwood, Ann M. Canarosi, Donald S. Carpenter, Dorothy C. Cornell, Susan E. Cowan, Mary J. Culbertson, Barbara Davis, John E. Donikowski, Charles A. Eves, Janet Edwards, John F. Berryman, Alice M. Basaseka, Carol A. Cole, Richard B. Cole, Shirley Fry. John M. Ferno, Jr. Mary C. Gallagher. Janet F. Gebert. Joseph A. George. Scott D. Gledich. Cynthia L. Good. Craig C. Goodwin. Christina Gray, Louise A. Greenberg, Marion Ginn, Thomas L. Ginn, Elva J. Pay, Barbara W. Hahn, Mary T. Hamilton, Robert E. Has Richard L. Hayes, Lynn M. Herlinger, Grace Herder, Howard E. Hillman, Ann Hofius, Thomas A. Powell, June Jackson. Karen L. Jones, Elaine L. Jordan, Donna L. Kowinski, William A. Kirpka, Jr., Darian J. Kaiser, Carol A. Klingensmith, Dennis D. Kraft, J. 
Kenneth Labor, Raymond D. Lambert, Patricia P. Lawrence, Philip D. Lacey, Steve Latonic, Ada L. Lewis, Rocky Lombard, Ramona Manning, Mary Jane Marks, Carol Martin, Helen Martin, H. Erlin Marks, Hugh N. McBride, Joel McDowell, Shirley McElhaney, Mildred McKinnis, Adrian McElvain, Rosemary McKenna, Janice McQuiston, David L. Miller, Michael Milliner, Deborah Mogul, Betty Mora, Jeffrey B. Moreland, Edith C. Mornowick, Jeanette M. Mowry, Michael Murko, Richard J. Murko, Carol Neifer, John J. Nestor, Roy R. Nyman, Catherine P. Oden, Virginia M. Parati, Daryl Penny, Gary J. Preston, James Preston, Joan Preston, John T. Quinlan, Mary E. Reed, Mildred Reed, Gary Rhodes, Roy Ritter, Betty Rogerson, Donald Rossetti, Lenan Rudert, Thomasine S. Russ, William H. Satterfield, Wesley H. Shell, Richard K. Schultz, Deanne Schaefer, Harriet Shallow, Judith Shannon, William L. Shannon, Carl H. Schartner, William S. Shaw, Donald Smith, Margaret St. John, Marie M. Steiner, J. Bernie Stover, Sandy M. Stone, David W. Stuyvesant, Vaughn E. Taylor, Mary Lou Trimble, Joseph P. Urbania, Ralph Walter, William A. Watson, Robert Widener, Joel J. Wentling, Harley P. Wyan Jr., Lawrence Williamson, Ethel M. Winner, Stanley Workman, In the rising of the sun, and in the going down, in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind, and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of the buds, and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky, and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. 
In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, or when we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. Rest eternal, grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Um, please rise and, and share a sign of peace with each other, keeping your hands to yourself. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise. For in the multitude of your saints you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us. And together with them, receive the crown of glory that never fades away. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As his disciples, let us now pray as our Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in firm love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now give us peace to love and serve the Lord. This concludes our service. You can hang around chat with each other. Thank you so much for being here with us on our virtual homecoming. That service is not really